I'm Elle Hendershot. And I'm Sydney Kumar. Global Edmonton is proud to support U of A Athletics. Global Edmonton. Our city. Our news. I think it's not hard for you to say that around the country, around our conference right now, people would look at this weekend as UBC a favorite to win at home, right? Undefeated at home, and they think they're going to get us. How do you rally on board? It's a chilly Thursday in January. The University of Alberta Pandas basketball team is headed out to the airport. Tickets to Vancouver in hand. After starting the season 11-0, the Pandas are coming off their first loss of the season and now facing a big UBC team that hasn't lost at home. This weekend series is crucial as teams are now ranked with the new RPI standings where opponents' records are factored into the value of each win or loss. As such, despite the Pandas' 11-1 record, they find themselves fifth in the standings. She's got a pull up, she'll shoot the three. It's going to be a difficult series. UBC is really good. They've been playing really well at home. Big team. A couple of really high-end offensive talents that we're going to have to contest with. And it's going to be a grind to get some wins this weekend. But we're looking forward to it. So here's an opportunity for us on the road to play loose and aggressive to play physical, to play loud, to play tough, right? Mental toughness, physical toughness, emotional toughness. You get your shot blocked, you go to the rim and you think you've got a basket and they hammer you and you don't get a call, how are we gonna respond, right? Other people gotta step up from tonight and I trust that the five of us on the floor at any moment are gonna defend them hard. We're gonna work hard for each other to get each other open tonight and get easy shots, okay? Compete for each other tonight, let's go. <laughs> We are underway here at the historic War Memorial Gymnasium. Open Rogers jumper is good for the Pandas. Up to Lauren Earl, she'll fire away and that will give Alberta the lead. No! Alberta very good from beyond the arc. Yes. Wide open for three and will not make a mistake. Gets her own loose ball, goes up again and makes that bucket. Active, energetic, we're dynamic into the glass. Keep that up. Good job, Elle. Great job, kid. Let her go. Mental errors in the last three minutes. Welcome back to second half action here at War Memorial Gym. UBC leading 36-29. Jay, are your shooters as you come off this middle, Good. right? Pass from Wilson back Safety. to Tawaniak and she nails the three. I know, it's like I drew it for her. Three, yes! Good yeah. job! Yes, Chris, not fake. Pull up in the paint, good. We're tied 45 all between these two historic rival. Worked over to Hendershot. Hampton looking to find room against Chris. And Rogers from three, she ties it at 54. Abby and Twan on the same side. Trying to find room and gets that beautiful turnaround. Ken now finding room and making that triple. Ken to shoot, crisp to the hoop, off the glass wow. for two, an acrobatic. An acrobatic bucket there as Chris brings her team to within a possession. Goes inside, spot. Finds Filowich, the layup is good with a second to go. The UBC has escaped with a big 71-64 victory over the Alberta Pandas, who suffered their second loss in league play. They dropped to 11-2. We stuck to our game plan. We got the shots we wanted in the game. They didn't fall early. I thought we battled through that. I think we did a really nice job in the third quarter, especially coming out after getting down at the end of the second. Just bowed back, great basketball game. I mean, they just executed better than us down the stretch in the last fourth. Now we've got to get over that hump and believe that we can beat a good team. It's late, but the night isn't over for the coaching staff as they pour over game film while the team sleeps. It might not be said out loud, but there's a sense of urgency to avoid the team's first three-game losing streak since 2011. 
The team's record so far is impressive, considering they've been playing without the reigning National Rookie of the Year they possess in Brooklyn Legault. After breaking her foot in the second week of the season, the Vancouver native hasn't taken the court since. I definitely wanted to play this weekend, but it's always nice coming home and seeing friends and family anyway, so I was fortunate enough to be able to travel with the team. Let's just shoot really well. Now we know we're doing More video follows the morning shoot around, and after a team lunch and time to rest, the team heads back to UBC for the rematch. We need to find ways to make extra plays tonight. Last night we didn't make those extra plays and it cost us at the end of the ball game. What did we learn from it? All those tiny little decisions we made throughout the game, how do we learn from them to improve on them today? Let's go! Panda got 2-2. The 11-2 Alberta Pandas in town to face the 9-2 UBC Thunderbirds. The Pandas start strong, but UBC doesn't flinch. It's a back and forth affair with teams trading buckets and defensive stops. Too hard of a drive there as Alberta draws the charge. As the team enters halftime, the U of A has a small four point lead. A very tight defensive first half. UBC comes out strong to start the third quarter, but the Pandas push back. Two teams trade steals in the UBC backcourt. Yeah, like, it's, like continuing to like get up and like soft up the glass, okay? It's anyone's game heading into the decisive fourth quarter where no one is interested in missing their shot. Put that one back, nodding the game at 48. The teams find themselves tied with 35 seconds left. This is off for Matty Rogers. Amy Wilson finds room in the lane and goes in and finishes with the right hand. Huge bucket for the Pandas. The Pandas' high-energy defense wins them the ball back, and a Matty Rogers free throw ices the game. <laughs> that will seal this one. A great game, a valiant effort by both teams, but Alberta was three points better on this night. We went after the boards hard all weekend long. I'm very proud of our forwards, and even like Shea has two offensive boards tonight. The post-game mood is noticeably different than the previous night. The coaches hand out the traditional awards and the players are off to see what delicious meal Brooklyn Legault's family has prepared. Her parents are hosting the entire team and any relative who made the trip. One big family. There's just something special about this team. Like it's like every year I've played here, of course the teams have been different, but one thing remains the same. And I know like when we say we're family and stuff like that, some people are like, yeah, all teams say they're family. It's one thing to say it, it's one thing to actually like live it and mean it. That's one of the main reasons why I came here. Everybody's so close and we have such good chemistry on and off the court. Everybody just gets along with everybody and it's awesome being a part of this team. On the back of every practice jersey, you'll find one of two words. Sisu, a Finnish word for perseverance, and Ohana, a Hawaiian term for family that found its way into Panda folklore on the team bus after a devastating playoff loss five years ago. Everyone was like super emotional, um, hanging out, and we were kind of joking around. And one of the girls on the team, a fifth year at the time, Ohana's from Lilo and Stitch, right? And she said that Ohana means family or whatever, and in that stupid voice. Um, and everybody bursted out laughing. And we've always done um, a word that we kind of, um, that we live by every year. And as soon as she said that, we were like, that's gotta be it. And it's kind of just grown into this whole thing that we like our team kind of is, is centered around almost. What? The biggest thing is that they understand that being a part of a family means we gotta find a way to love each other every day, but we may not like each other every day. And how do you live with that? Panda's on 212, Pandas! Pandas. I think we've grown, like we're super young and it's really exciting to see people starting to find out what they do well and sticking to their roles and I don't know, after last week's games it just feels like we're finally starting to come together. Your faces lately on your layups have been very beautiful. <laughs> More like very, very concentrated. The Pandas now hold a 12-2 and record and in fourth spot in the RPI standings. A top four spot at the end of the regular season gives the team a first round bye into the playoffs, a familiar occurrence for the team. The recent style of play from the Pandas, however, is a little less familiar. Let's go, ladies, get our voices going. 
I think we're shooting the three a lot better than we have in, in previous years and a lot more of them. So that's kind of a new dimension for us. We've been more of an inside team the last few years and then started changing that a little bit last year and then all of a sudden you see a lot more of it this season. Trying to play fast and up-tempo basketball and pretty gritty defensive team man-to-man. -man. I'm not sure a lot of people think this, but I think we have the capacity to be very good. And I think we're right there with almost all the competition in all of Canada actually and I think um, if we start gelling and people continue to grow and uh, accept their roles I think I think we could be pretty good this year. Pretty good might be an understatement especially considering the Pandas lost their top two scorers from last season to graduation as well as a couple of big role players. Add the loss of Legault just four games in and there were few outside the dressing room that expected much from the young Pandas. Yeah I was very frustrated definitely when I found out about this injury. Uh, I wanted to make an impact this year coming in but fortunate that it's not a season ending injury so I can come back and still show what I can do. Shoot that. The team has faced the same hurdle over the past three seasons that it is yet to clear. They've earned a spot at Nationals, but they haven't been able to clinch the first game, leading to sixth and fifth place finishes. You know, for us to get over that hump, there's a long way to go between now and then. Um, if we're lucky enough to make the national championship, it's about attention to detail, everybody understanding their role and their responsibility and the scout. I think that's something this team has really tried to do a better job of this year. What they do have this year is Maddie Rogers as a focal point on offense, who has increased her scoring this year from 10 to 16 points a game. The media frequently talks about her emergence as a leader, but for her and the Pandas, it's just a natural step. I don't think it was as big of a leap as other people or people outside of the team seem to think it is. Um, Scott and all the girls, they do a great job allowing people to grow and fill roles and it's just kind of the next progression. Coach Edwards wanted more experience on the team after losing so many veterans. So he got in touch with players who still had a year left in eligibility like Shea Crisp. Before taking last year off, Crisp had played four seasons with the Victoria Vikes but could maybe be coaxed out of early retirement. She was traveling in South America at the time and I found her in a hostel and had a crazy <laughs> Skype call. And, and it was sort of like a party hostel, so I kind of had to find like this quiet spot in the corner. I didn't actually ever meet her face to face until she got off the plane in September to come to school, so that was a unique one. One can't forget that these aren't just basketball players, they are students earning a degree, and balancing school and a full-time playing schedule is not for everyone. It's kind of tricky at first, uh, you kind of feel like you need to prioritize one over the other, which I honestly don't think is true. It's a challenge for sure, but I think when you stay on top of it, it's, it's fine. It's not, it's not easy by any means, but I think if there are two things that you're passionate about, it's not hard to get both of them done. Now I'm watching things on planes, taking notes on the road, and really utilizing all the free time that I have, which actually has benefited my marks a um, tremendous amount this year, which was awesome. How was your weekend? It was good. Yeah, yeah watch you guys play. That's why Edwards makes sure the players are in a position where they can thrive off the court, because being a panda isn't just about wins. He also cares about the person you're going to be after you leave this program. It's not all about basketball. He truly cares about the players and like their academics and everything else. It's not all about just basketball. And seeing what these young women are capable of is why Edwards has been coaching for 17 years, the last 11 with the University of Alberta. Obviously the competition is one big part of it. I love competition and I love the, the winning and losing and everything goes with it, but um, more than anything it's, it's the uh, growth and development of the young women and watching them kind of grow up from that 18 year old wide eyed kid who showed up and didn't know what she was getting into all the way to the fifth year that you know knows everything about the program and knows everything about who she wants to be in the future and just I get real joy out of watching them grow up. Yeah. <laughs> go. I know. I know I could never find another coach to, like him that I would want to play for and I mean he makes it fun. When it comes down to X's and O's he knows what he's talking about. He's really good at finding that line between hey we're having fun now but like hey this is serious and we got to get to work now. Lob. How are you, Lil? Here you go, man. Yeah, I know. He's just, he's a good guy. And like, I just like having, cracking jokes at him and getting good laughs every now and then. Edwards is flanked by Drew Hansen and Kelly Hagstrom, the latter who's been an assistant with the program for 13 years. I uh, room with him every day. I think uh, 
You know, I, I see him almost as much as I see my wife, to be honest, so. Uh, you'll notice there's times where we dress alike without even like talking to each other. So uh, yeah, our relationship is uh, really good, I think. And it's over the last couple of years, I'd say it's really gotten much stronger too in our trust on the bench. Assistant coaching has its perks, but it's all volunteer. To be volunteering so many hours for 13 years is remarkable, but Hagstrom is dedicated to his craft. He's either worked full time or been in school his whole tenure with the program, but he finds a way to balance both and it's his good natured attitude that's been a blessing for the program. My philosophy is that I'm really here just to help them drive and get to their, their goals. Uh, I'm as competitive as everybody else. I, I want to win. I want to make sure that we're playing tough. Uh, however, at the same time, I'm more than willing to crack a joke under a stressful situation or try to like, make sure everybody understands that, yeah, we're still just playing the game. You see his role on our, on our staff has evolved over the last 10 years now to, to a point where everybody just trusts him, and me especially, I trust him with everything we do as a program, and, and he's my right-hand man every day. Up next for the team is a home matchup with the Fraser Valley Cascades. It's Shoot for the Cure Night, a fundraiser for breast cancer awareness, and Coach Edwards' 400th game as head coach of the Pandas. However, the milestone takes a backseat to the Pandas' determination on earning a sweep. Playoffs are exactly a month away, and these are must-win games. But first, Bananagrams. <laughs> Rogers, Hendershot, and Crisp all live together right by the Panda's home court. It's the go-to residence for the rest of the team whenever somebody wants to hang out. I just want to win. I'm so bad at this. There's so many A's. Oh, it's fun, and it's just nice being around people like that. And being out, like, outside of basketball, just being able to hang out and not have to worry about or talk about basketball and just having those friends around. It's really fun. It's really good. Yeah, lots of fun. I'm definitely happy that that worked out. Hanging out with each other outside of practice and games, I think, has helped to create that sort of camaraderie between us. And I don't know, we just all have so much fun together and like enjoy hanging out with each other. Let's talk about this matchup tonight. If based on the RPI standings that are being used by the Canada West Conference for the first time ever, Fraser Valley's ahead of Alberta coming into this one. Win loss wise, they're eight and four, and Alberta's twelve and two. But with the RPI percentage, Fraser Valley comes in in the third spot in the Canada West standings. We're gonna really have to keep a fast tempo for sure, um, and push the ball. I feel like and work as a team. <laughs> shot to Amy Wilson. She uses her shoulder to create space. Crisp, another important transfer into the Alberta program this year. She spots up for a jumper and that's true. Shea Crisp for three. Ain't low, but there's a three knocked down by Carey. You know what I'm saying? And she's giving you an attack. Marchichu, nice take off the ball fake. Marinia Marchichu makes it 13-5 Alberta. Here's a ball fake and a drive by Clegg and she does almost the exact same move. Three, two, one. Jump her up. And good! Shea Crisp from just inside the volleyball attack line makes it 16 7 Pandas after one. Three point line content instead to try to take away the inside. Three is up and good. And pushed the other way by Williams. She floats it up and good. And there's a nice little run for Fraser Valley. It's 18 16. Carey back out, that shot is up, and good. Shea Crisp from three, she's got another one. The three is short by Crisp, but a rebound right inside. El Hendershot left alone, scores easily. Alberta leads 27-19 at half, and uh, Doug, a very low scoring game. We're five for 18, one for eight in the second quarter, and a lot of them were just, I gotta get a shot up. And Alberta with an eight point lead here at half, 27-19. Been on her all night, and there you go. Maddie Rogers drills a three in front of her. The feet inside, and Hendershot rattles that home. Again, every time Maddie Rogers touches the basketball, there is two to three players right near her. Earl with it up top. She tries a three. That's good. Lauren Earl breaks a scoring slump for the Pandas. Sartori the crossover on Hendershot floats that in, and good. Back up for Rogers. Rogers open for a three. Got it. Maddie Rogers. Off oh, Let's go. Two, one, Chris got to get it off, she does, and gets it off the window. Shay Chris have a game. She's got 17 and five threes. Ballard, come on, that way. Takes it back out, three is up, and good, Maddie Rogers. 63-51 will be the final in this one as the Pandas 
come away with the victory over Fraser Valley and move to 13 and two on the season. We're very tough on ourselves and we need to perform, but we also need to remember that basketball's fun and that we need to enjoy it. The team is great people and I felt included like the minute I got here. The Pandas sweep the Cascades and earn another pair of wins. Only time will tell what happens once the playoffs come, but there's one guarantee. The Pandas are going to fight for every single point for each other because that's what families do. And that's what they signed up for when they put on the green and gold. I love my teammates and I know that they love me. And I think that's what comes first on this team. Obviously winning is huge, but family's always first. I'm just like so blessed and fortunate that I came to this program because I've made some lifelong friends that I know like outside, if we never would have all played basketball, it's like, what are the chances that I would have met you and became a friend with you? <laughs>